Happy Friday, Andy! I'm out of my box. Happy out of the box Friday. Yay! Ooh, so, we have another show. You just yeah. plugged another show accidentally. <laughs> well, we'll be happy. <laughs> I'm out of the box. I'm out of the box. I'm a real girl. You're back in studio. Back in action. All right. Watch out, everybody. And we, we'll see how long this lasts for. So we better take advantage of it while we. What have does that it. mean? I never know. I just what God's poof like yeah. Houdini. That's exactly <laughs> right. That ties like right into the second part of the story. It's poof. really cool. Yeah, we're still in Mark Five. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I don't know. Yep. Yep. Lots of Mark Five left. <laughs> we do. We do. Oh, we're, all right. We're gonna do a bunch of it. We're gonna get into like like your. Uh, your world of healing now. So this would be cool. What? I know. You have to wait and see. All right. Well, where are we starting? Uh, let's go at 14. 514. Huh, that's my birthday. Ooh, see, look at that. It's perfect. It's meant to be. Yeah, send me flowers, everyone. On 514. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, Mark, 514. Let's go. And they that... Fed the swine, fled, and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they saw it, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Do you want me to stop? Yeah, because I'm never going to get past that. Okay. What a, what a crazy, crazy thing. But but I, I think of how... Yeah, get out. I, I, want, I want to pass judgment on these people, and then I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen this before, right? So uh, they as soon as this happens, right? So Jesus heals this demon-possessed man, the 2,000 demons go running into the pigs. The pigs go over the cliff, right? And they all die. And again, you got these herdsmen who are taking care of the pigs, right? They just saw all this happen because they're going to go tell people that it happened. So we know they saw it all happen, right? right? Their immediate response isn't to run to Jesus, right? You, you see a miracle like this happen. Yeah. Why would you not run to the guy who just made it happen? Like, why wouldn't your immediate thing be to run to him, I'd be like, get rid of my demons, please. <laughs> exactly. But at please, the, please, please. You just see power like this. Why are you not doing a face plant in front of Jesus going, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Right? Instead of acting like, you know, it's a Tuesday. Right. But <laughs> instead, they, they, they run into the city. I, I can even rationalize that and say like, hey, hey, they saw Jesus. They heard about Jesus. And, and they went and told other people about Jesus. That's good for them, right? And immediately, the people of the town come running out to Jesus. And there's, there's, there's two things that happen here. The first one is, they're told about this demon-possessed man. That, by the way, they had tried to shackle, they had tried to chain, they had right. tried to control, right. they knew was out here. Right. right? They cast him away. They cast him out there, they put him out there, and they, they realize and they recognize he's been healed. He's, he's totally healed. But then there's the second part of it is, 2,000 pigs took a nosedive off a cliff, yeah, right? probably more upset about that. They, they're, they're, they're more upset about the pigs, and they're begging Jesus to leave. And I think about, like, it, it is so mind-boggling. I'm finding the words hard to say right now, right? Which is not a normal thing for me. <laughs> you just see a guy completely healed, and your response to the healing is, Hey, Jesus, can you leave? begging him to leave please 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 leave get out of here pray we him don't to leave. right we don't want you we don't want what you're doing we don't want freedom right is really what they're saying we don't want to be freed like this we don't want you to wreak havoc in our lives yeah but this is so true like it's you know it's funny like all the all the books and things i've been reading lately is it's Um, getting stuck on something. Good. Go. So, the beginning of this, right, we pointed out last week that when Jesus got there, 
the guy saw him and he ran and worshipped him. Mm-hmm. And, and he had said he cried day and night, right? But there are people that don't want that. Like they don't want, they don't want the freedom, right? So if Jesus went here, like Jesus went through a lot of people. Obviously the people that wanted him to leave, they had problems too. Yeah, yeah. They had demons, clearly. They had illnesses, like everyone does, right? We all have some kind of something we need deliverance or healing from. Everyone, right? right? <laughs> or we'd be perfect like him. He doesn't, he doesn't ever force it on people. Yeah. Like he literally never forces it on people and he never goes around and is just like, oh, you who hate me and you, you, you running away, well, turn around, I'm going to heal you, right? Jesus doesn't do that. It's the pe- the people come to him. Yeah. The people come to him, the people come to him, the people come to him. Whether or not they get saved after that is irrelevant. Yeah. The, the point of this part is they come to him, they want the healing. We can't, you know, we were talking about, you know, last week about the power that we have and how Jesus said we can do this and that we shouldn't be scared, right? right. We told right. people, like, don't be scared of the demons and don't be scared to tell them where to go. Get out. <laughs> don't put them in the pigs, but cast them out, yeah. right? And I, I think, I know I have struggled with these two types of people because I'm like, well, if, if I want to pray for your healing, and even if you maybe say you want healing, uh-huh, uh-huh. like, why isn't it working? Right. right. Right? But the truth is, really, some people don't want to be healed. So, like, you know, the misery loves company, and people get comfortable in their misery. Like, it's true, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's totally true. People do get comfortable in their misery yeah. because when you're miserable or you have these demons, these little friends that are with you, you have these ailments. You know what to expect every day. Yep. You know how to plan every day, right? You can say, oh, I have this physical disease. So, well, I can't go here. I can't do this. I can't do that. I have an excuse for everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I can use it to my advantage when I want to. But, oh, yeah, it kind of sucks. But I'm used to it. I'm getting by. And as you get older, you just have these things. And we make all these ways for it to just be okay. Right, right. And then it's and, and it's like a it's like a positive thing, right? Like then I get pity and I get gifts and I get prayers and people like feel bad for me and it's all oh, it's so great, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, no, um, yeah, it sounds crazy when you put it this way, mm-hmm. but it's the same it's the same exact thing. Same exact like because there's still people now that are sick or that that have issues or whatever and they just don't free they're still running away from jesus they're still saying get out of here jesus like go away because he's right there Mm -hmm. he's right there for everybody you don't have to have a physical person come necessarily and 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 do this Mm -hmm. like you can reach out to him yourself and they're doing the same thing they're just telling him like go away so we think i i I think oh what you're saying is like, this is fascinating uh, a little convictional too yeah well, it is trying for it not to be we <laughs> we're trying to make it not convictional but we sit in church services mm. right and it doesn't matter whether there's 20 people or 2,000 people right or 20,000 people we sit in church services at the end of the service right people respond and people meet Jesus mm. why is that not attractive to the rest of us who are sitting there because we say we've already done it once like oh i already went down and i accepted the lord once so like it, it's not about going down to the front and accepting the lord it's going down to the front and meeting with jesus right is that a one time is that a one time thing no it's an everyday thing so why why is it that we don't well, want to be where jesus is two reasons yep at minimum two i can think of right number one after that, you you have to. It's it's like what I talked to Mel about last week, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the uh, the willingness to change your mind, mm-hmm. and the people that don't. So like when the people that make up their mind about something, and then they realize that they're wrong, but they cannot change their mind. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They are in this like utter like ridiculousness, right? right? And you could watch them, and you're just like, really, like what? Are you, really, you're you're that like. 
Yeah. You know. You could look at them and know that they know and they won't say it. Yep. And it's like, okay, I feel like I'm banging my face on a wall. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's the same kind of thing if, if for these people who don't, who don't want to take Jesus and don't want to let him take away their problem Mm -hmm. because then they have to accept that, like that full surrender, right? That full submission to Mm -hmm. him and that full, Mm -hmm. like take my pride and squish it thing. Right. So like that's number one. And then number two is they, they don't know what their, their day is going to bring. Like they don't know. They can't say, well, um, and then I'm in this box. I know exactly what's going to happen because here's my here's my circumstances. But if you're fully if you're fully free and you've got no chains, then oh, there might be uncomfortable things you have to do or uncomfortable things you're asked to do or places that you might have to go that you didn't want to go. So mm. maybe it's a lot easier just to keep the chains on. Yeah. It, then have a question mark for tomorrow. Yeah, the, even though it could be the best thing ever. We, we, it's fear of the unknown. I love that, right? The devil we know is better than the devil we don't know. Is yeah. The, is the phrase that yeah. goes with that. And I think that, again, these people had a chance to be with Jesus, meet Jesus, talk with Jesus, have Jesus free them from things, right? I think the other thing that goes along with it is a lot of times we think other people need freedom more than we do. Like, we get, like you're saying, we get so used to living with our oppression. We get so used to functioning. Mm-hmm. Right, it's it's the highly functioning alcoholic, the highly functioning liar, the highly functioning whatever it is. We get so used to doing it that we we don't think we need deliverance from anything. Right, we'll be willing to me. Yeah, I like I like my whatever. Right, but but we wouldn't say that that's something that I need to be delivered from. Mm-hmm. Right, and so again, yeah, and then you drop dead with a heart attack. Right, we, you had no, you just ignored it. Right, that's exactly right. And so we, we know that people are meeting Jesus up front, but we somehow the enemy gets us to believing, but we don't we don't need to do that. We don't we don't have anything in our lives. And the truth is at any moment, wherever I am in life, at almost any moment, if Jesus appeared on the scene like that, I would have things for him to take care of. Whether it's thoughts, words, or actions, I'm gonna have something for him to take care of. <laughs> yeah, please. Right? So, oh my God. So there's a need to respond to Jesus. So my my question is, if Jesus shows up in a church service, why isn't everybody responding in some way, shape, or form? Now, again, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you have to go up front to respond. No. Right. But we've been talking about down here in the last couple of weeks this whole idea of confession and this whole idea of consecration and this whole idea of covenant, right? Like, like, listen, there's something about being willing to confess your need. Like this demon-possessed guy, everybody knew he was demon-possessed. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew he needed help. Everybody need, he knew he needed deliverance, right? We have those people around us. Everybody knows the person who's living in sin who needs to be fixed. Like we can point them out, yeah. right? But but there's, there's, there's something to that humility that stands up in front of people and says... I need Jesus, right? So, so we're constantly, we're constantly wanting other people. This is where it's going to be convictional for me. We're constantly wanting to stand up in front of other people and say to them, "I know you need Jesus. Why aren't you responding to Jesus? I'm telling you about Jesus. I'm, I'm showing you Jesus. Why aren't you responding to Jesus?" Right? But the truth is, those of us who are standing up there saying that, very rarely are we saying, "I need Jesus. I need to respond to him." Like really. If Jesus showed up on a Sunday morning at, at Lakeview Community Church, right, I'm going to have just as much need for Jesus as anybody that I'm talking to. What you should be doing is shoving everybody out of the way to get up there. It, it, <laughs> That's what you should be doing. Exactly. But being willing, <laughs> why is it so hard? I was talking to, to some men this morning. And we, oh why is it so hard for us to admit that we have a need for Jesus? So here's a, here's a question that popped into my mind. Maybe a good mel in the middle. Ooh. We rank sin, right? Yeah. We look at all oh, your sin, your sin, your sin. Oh, your sin's worse than my sin. Yep. But like, do we rank? Do we rank ailments? Do we rank consequence? Mm. Like, do we rank consequence? Because, and and do we do it because we totally? Do we look at other people's like that and say you need you need to get up there? You need to get up there because you've got these twelve diseases, and that's somehow. 
number one, better or worse than my four diseases, and number two, somehow disassociated from your sin. Yeah. Yeah, my, my sickness isn't because I'm of my lifestyle. My no, I'm totally because... pure and clean and great. And got, I'm just so got, plagued. I'm a Job. Got... Everybody's a Job. I don't know how I got diabetes. There's only one Job in the Bible, but, you know, everyone in our church is a Job. <laughs> like, what? A, like, seriously. But it's like, a... Come on. I think that's part of the deal. Like, you're, I think you're right. There's a great mill in the middle. There's so a great we, mill. So now we have to be careful, right? Because <laughs> mill in the middle comes so right. Come after back this. tomorrow, guys, yes. for some expansion. I think. And see mill turn different colors. <laughs> I think that. I think that you know once. I don't know once. It's not me who gets to declare that I'm good with God. It's Jesus who declares that I'm good with God. It's God who declares I'm good with God. Right. But we, we live in this world where I, I look at my life I say, yeah, I'm good. I, I, didn't, I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't thought anything. I haven't done blah, blah, blah. And so then we assume that if I get in a car accident, right, I, it, it's, it's not a, it's, there's no consequence of anything I've done. It's just, it's just, it just happened, right? Well, it just funny. happened. It's the other person's problem or fault. Right. Or... It's, if we, but, it, but if, if somebody leaves a bar at midnight, right? And they go out and they get in an accident. We're immediately jumping all over them. That that's just a consequence of the fact they were at the bar until 12 o'clock. They were drinking. And look, at they could have killed somebody. And they could have gotten somebody. Blah, blah, blah. Why is their car accident a consequence of what they were doing? And my car accident has nothing to do with right. why what, what I'm doing. Right? right. My, couldn't be because of something you did a week ago. Or it couldn't be something as simple as distracted driving. Right? It could have been you, like, hey. Or completely unrelated. Or I just left a house where I was talking about somebody. Yeah. Right. And you I get screamed in the car. at your kid. Right. They, in a really bad way. We look at this thing and we're saying the consequences for some things are super obvious, right? But the consequences for other things, right, aren't. And a part of it is we don't want to live in the fear, right? I I don't want to live in fear of God's going to zap me every time I do something, right? There's there's value in that, right? Yeah, I think you kind of should sometimes. <laughs> but I think that we 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 live. We don't have to live in the fear of that. What we have. I think we should too, by the way. But I think before that, we have to recognize, no, God's always going to use conviction before before that, right? He, he's been working on it. God's never going to be like, Andy, you told that lie, and three seconds later, something happens to me. God's going to give me an opportunity as I'm walking out the door, as I'm getting into my car, as I'm turning in on, yeah. as I'm waiting for it to warm up. God's going to give me that amount of time for the Holy Spirit to be convicting, we're like, you need to get your butt back in there and you need to fix this, right? Yeah. Like, what you did was wrong. I, I think of that, like, at church. People who, you know, attack each other in the church. And then they have to walk out of the church. They have to get in their car. They have to drive home. They have to get their dinner ready, sit down for dinner. That's a whole lot of time for God to be saying, uh, hello, you, what you did was wrong. Go fix it. Uh -huh. Right? But we, but what we say is the person in the church deserved that, or I'll fix it later, or whatever it is, and that's just gonna. Be well, it's okay. like, do you, ever, do you ever see? This has definitely happened to me, so I'll throw myself under the bus. Like where God will like instantly do it in a really nice but very obvious way. Yeah. Like I've like, I've you know shot my mouth off maybe, a little snottily once or twice, and then like. I'm walking and I literally like right there trip. Yeah. Right? Like, and it's like, just saying, maybe. <laughs> it's like, okay, sorry. Like, you instantly know yeah. why you just tripped. Yeah. You know why you just tripped. Like, come on. Like, but it, it's good that the Holy Spirit gives you time, obviously, because, you know, I mean, again, God's not trying to trick us. I've said that in another video at some point. With Mel, maybe. Like, God's not trying to, like, catch us up with stuff. God's not trying yeah. to change his mind to, like, trick you. And, ha, 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 like, I say all this stuff, but I really just want to mess you up. But, yes, then we never, if we if we ignore him so many times and end up searing our conscience and, and, and just the voice just disappears, then, yes, we get to a point where we have 12 diseases or whatever and... We're, we're just like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know how this happened. Or 2,000 demons yeah. in us. And you're just like, well, oh, just poor me. Like, we, we cannot correlate it 
maybe we could correlate it, but we, we can't decide that it's causation, right? We can't say, well, this sin caused this. I do that all the time with myself, with food, yeah. right? I always say, okay, I look at physical things. I like the human body. I like all that stuff. And I always look at this. I'm always like, what are you sticking in your mouth? Yep. Because I'm seeing the direct cause of all of the things that you're struggling with mm-hmm. by what yep. you're sticking in your mouth. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I don't know. We have to think more, right? Like if you do that and God lets you get sick from it, then it's probably a sin to do it. Yeah. Right? Definitely a warning. Maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. Or else, why would you get sick? Well, again, we, we rationalize, we come up with Christianese, right? It's, it's, it, it is something outside of us that did it, right? It's just like, hey, it was bad food. Hey, it was bad cooking. Hey, it was bad timing. Hey, it was bad. I ate before I came this. I drank before this. I didn't have this. I didn't, right? Like, it, 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 yeah. it, we make everything... Okay, it's funny. I was mm. eating dinner with some guys last night. And Socially acceptable sin. I've right. been saying it forever. I was eating guy, dinner with some guys yeah, last night. Well, they're just having pizza and chicken, right? Chicken wings and chicken tenders. And this one guy pulls out of his coat his his favorite like spice stuff to put hot on. Hot sauce? Place, right? But it wasn't hot sauce. It was like a powder stuff, right? So it was, it was whatever it was. And, and he, like, I, I just think it, it makes everything taste that way. Like everything is going to taste like that. Right, so it doesn't matter whose house you go to. You can be, like that would be great for me with beets and turnips and all the things I that people exactly feed me. I know exactly who you're talking right? about. <laughs> they just just put stuff on it and it makes it all taste the same. And they said, I think sometimes that that's what we do. We sit in church. We sit in, we sit at home and we just we just pull out our our version of stuff and we pour it on it. We're like, oh yeah yeah yeah, no everything's okay. You know that sickness is this or this. We make everything okay. Right? I can eat anything as long as it tastes like this. I like this taste. I, and I think that we, we just make everything palatable to us rather than stopping and be, listen, a guy who's this demonically oppressed is repulsive. Nobody wants to be around him, obviously. They didn't have him in the He can. He probably killed him. He probably killed people. Exactly, right? We, but, but yet we, we look at that and say, hey, we, we want him to get healed, but we're always looking at him and we're not looking at what we might need. Right, and I think, I, I think that this whole story is is, to me, it's shocking in nature. Right, when I really stop and think about it, I do. I lose my words because, it, I, I just it's shocking. Yet, I've been these people. Right, I, I've been the people who have said, "Hey, can you go? Like, just go away. We don't want this right now. We're we not ready for this." We don't want to give up our sin, because we enjoy our sin. We don't we don't do sins that we don't like. Or, or our comfortability either, right? So we like our sin. We, as a pastor, I get into a routine and I take care of people this way. If the Holy Spirit really fell, I would, I, I don't think I ever know what I'm asking for. Because if the Holy Spirit really fell, number one, I, I love, I, I read it uh, months ago, a couple months ago, um, the beginning of a book to you about Tommy Tenney and God Chasers, right? And at the beginning of that book, right, he, he talks about, sets it all up, but he, he talks about it a evening Right or a morning service, I think it was, where uh, they had really been praying for the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come, right? And and the Holy Spirit, they walk into this building, they realize something's going to be different, like the Holy Spirit's there, right? And it's funny because the pastor gets up in that book, like he gets up to to do something, and immediately gets shot backwards, like like literally, like it's poof, nope. like he goes Set backwards, down. and right, and the elders have to carry him to his office and and deal with him. So like, do, do you know where that starts with the pastor, right? So if I got up on a Sunday morning and I really want the Holy Spirit to be there, first of all, the, the times that, that that has happened at our church, it's new meaning to my shove you out of the way. Right? <laughs> but the times would be funny if it really happened. The oh times gosh. of that. See, now I'm going to finish this and I'm going to tell you whether I want that to happen or not. Right? The times <laughs> that, that that the Holy Spirit really has worked, people can tell. Like you can tell when the pastor stands up and he's. He's shaking and he's he's like stumbling over words and he's like ah, uh, the Holy Spirit's really working right because the rest of the like we just get up we put our, our sermon down or it's up on the thing screen and we go all right let's go and we just read through it and we're done yay good <laughs> but when the Holy Spirit takes over all of a sudden there's all this chaos mm. right and you can you can sense it you can sense when you're when your pastor's struggling you can sense when the worship leader's struggling right with there's this. This, this, like, Holy Spirit just laying down on you, right? And, and I think, like, we, we want that. But the problem is, 
it's if the Holy Spirit starts at the beginning of the service, man, it's going to start with the person praying in our service. It's going to start with the person doing announcements in our service. It's going to take right. a couple minutes to get to the pastor, right? But like we're we're gonna go we're gonna go. It's not gonna way. even get there, right? I, the the Holy Spirit doesn't follow your schedule. I don't. Right, it's not we, like okay, okay, you go next. When do we want the Holy Spirit to show up? Like I, I want you to show up exactly at ten forty two, right? Because it fits into my sermon. So because you just kind of do a little fireworks display at ten forty two, <laughs> and then we'll do it. Yeah. You know the the oh, problem is the answer so to your true. question is what do I want to be shoved out of the way? Like again, it's so funny because you say. You pray before all kinds of things. Like, hey, shove this person out of the way, and that's created a a, a a moment down here because there are people who are like, yeah, yeah, I want that. I want you to pray that for me. And then there are people who are like, well, the Holy Spirit doesn't shove us out of the way. The Holy Spirit uses us. He he, he works through us. It, it's semantics. It's the idea, right? The idea is, hey, Holy Spirit, take over this person. You speak through them. You do whatever you it's want. It's let do me not them. get in your way, right. God. But. But what if, because we always take it as the Holy Spirit's going to come in and take over Andy and, and like, you know, this whole... You don't lose of, your free will. Right, night of the living dead thing where I walk <laughs> around like a, a Christian zombie and the Holy Spirit's going to talk and everybody's going to be like, <gasps> right? right? No, it's it's all of a sudden my words make sense. Like there are times where we look at people and go, who's that? Like we, we've sat down here, take people, and I've looked at you and went, whoa, holy cow, like look at that. Like the Holy Spirit's definitely here. Mm-hmm. Right, the Holy Spirit, like that person doesn't talk like that mm-hmm. normally, right? But what happens, what would happen if if I got up to preach? It would be much easier for me to use you as an example. But what if I got up to preach, right? <laughs> and and literally the Holy Spirit went, yep, that's enough. <laughs> and and you just dropped over, right? You took a nap, right? Like, what? First of all, I, I preach all the time. That if God really showed up in our church services, we'd all be doing a nose plant. We would not be standing up worship. We, you're not standing up for I presence can't of stand God. I can't worship ever. But I don't even. I don't care what anybody says. Mm-hmm. You are not big enough. You don't have big enough big boy pants to pull up to stand in front of God. Like you, you just do not have that, right? Every single person <laughs> that ran into the angel of the Lord, ran into Jesus, ran into God. It's nose plant, and they're talking with sand in their mouth, if they're talking at all, right? Like, it's just not happening. I always said, I'm like, I would puke on myself. I would just be all over. It would be a hot mess. And he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Right. Like, you didn't get up. So we're, the, the truth of the matter is, so true. Ah, this is where it's gotten super personally convictional right now, right? The truth of the matter, whether it's these videos that we're doing, or whether it's, it's times we get to speak, I only want part of the Holy Spirit. I want the part of the Holy Spirit that comes in and gives me wisdom and knowledge and words and, and all those kind of things. I don't want the Holy Spirit to shove me out of the way. I, I don't want him to. I want to be able to teach. I, want, I just want him to enlighten me and give me great teaching so you all look at so this and listen. So you can do it. Right. That, that's what most of us want is empower me to do the work. And again, we, we love the fact that that's what God does. right? God uses crummy people like me to get his stuff done. But if God really showed up, the Holy Spirit really, truly showed up on a Sunday morning at Lakeview. And I, I'm going to pause there and say, I don't know that I'm praying for that. I want that. I think I want that. I, I think that's my thought process is him to show up. But if I was really praying for the Holy Spirit to show up right now but with you and I, we there'd be a whole bunch of dead air. Because the very first thing that you and I are going to do is nose plant because we have to get right with God first. Because we have to be in the right place first. God's not speaking, right? The Holy Spirit's not going to indwell somebody who's caked in sin without dealing with them. Like The sin's got to go. You can't have both masters, right? You, you, you can't be there. So all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit falls on me. All of the ugly has to go. Well, imagine that hot mess on a Sunday morning, if God really starts going like, okay, you want this, Andy, let's go in front of everybody. Let's deal with this and 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 this. And and, and you'd be in deep trouble, right? You'd be in deep trouble. But the good news is if the Holy Spirit really filled, but at the same time that he's doing that in me, he's going to do that in you and everybody else who's standing there and sitting there. Like, we're all going to get to the same place. Yeah, it's not going to matter because everybody's doing it. Right. But for this, what happens in the church services, if sadly, if that were to happen, 
there would be some people sitting there who would be like, go, please go. I don't want anything to do with this. Oh, yeah. I don't want anything to do with you working on me like that. This is kooky. I don't want anybody to know what's going on with my life. I don't want anybody to know these things. I don't want... We've got to keep it... They just sneak out the back. They do. So it's a scary thing because I think as a pastor, I, I want the results of it for you. I don't want the results of it for me. It's going to start... It's going to start with me. Right? But... Here's some herdsmen. It didn't start with them. It didn't go. They ran to the city. It should, have t- should be your first clue. There's some, they didn't run to Jesus, get right with Jesus, and then run. Like the Samaritan woman gets right with Jesus, then goes to the city and tells everybody. Right? Other people get right with Jesus, then go into the city and tell people. These men had a chance to get right with Jesus, but they didn't. They just they ran no, away. No, you know what this looks like? <laughs> this... I. This looks like to me, this is like, this is like the church leadership, right? Who takes the the messy, crazy, bad person and just kicks him out. Now, don't confuse that with the whole Matthew 18 thing. And like, we go through a process, right? We don't just kick people out. But like, some people should, should be asked to leave yeah. after a process a godly process right mm-hmm. not just a well you have demons so you gotta go and we're gonna banish you out yeah. to this place and we're gonna tie you up and we're just gonna leave you here to die and rot right like i, I don't know that's what, that's what i see and what you just said is like the church maybe that's why judgment's coming well i think i think you're right. too many churches like that I think there's too many people. Proud right leaders there. who don't want deliverance and healing of their own, and they just want to point fingers at their congregation and then tell them to leave when they're too hard. Well, listen, we, oh, soapbox. Then pull me down, please, in a second. Don't leave me up on the soapbox. Right? Churches ought to be filled with people like this. People ought to be flocking, right? They've been chained by the world. They are cast aside by the world and they'll be flocking to church to get freedom right totally flocking to the church to get freedom but the problem is churches aren't about sick people churches are about healed people so the church is about fixed people so now what we have is we have a bunch of people who come to church pretending to be fixed pretending to be okay so that they can do something in church so they can feel like they're doing something for god right listen it's not about doing something for god it's about being something for God, right? So we need to make it be about, about getting the freedom to do that, right? About the, being able to say, hey, listen, I don't do any of these things right, right? We're At, at, at Lakeview, we're talking about Romans 12, and we're, we're picking up in verse 9, and we're talking about all the things that Christian life is about. Mm-hmm. But it starts. It starts by saying... We're not doing any of these things right. No, it's right? a show. We're not. We're not doing what we need to do. It's right. A show. But again, when it starts with the pastor getting up front and pretending that he has it all together, right? My favorite Sundays are when I get to stand up in front of people and say tales of a goofed up pastor, right? There's a freedom in being able to say I messed up. Mm-hmm. Like I am messed up, and you know what? You're smart enough to know that I messed up. Like you, you, you don't need somebody to tell you that I'm messed up to know that I'm messed up. You just have to look at me and know that I'm messed up, right? <laughs> like, no matter how you want to get there, you know, if you need somebody to help you, well, then, you know, ask somebody and they'll tell you that I'm messed up. But, but there's freedom. There's freedom in being able to say, I need Jesus. This guy needed Jesus, right? Well, he knew it. He, he knew it, and Jesus knew it. Jesus came That's why went there. Came to him, mm-hmm. right? But before Jesus gets a foot off the boat, the guy's right there. He's like, yes, I've been waiting forever for the... Why are we not... Why are we not eager and waiting for freedom? Uh, some of us are. But, right, but why are the majority of people not coming to church on Sunday just wanting freedom? I already told you. Say it again. I already told you. Number one, then they have to give up their pride and their control and their ego and they have to submit and they have to admit that they can't do it. Uh And number two, then they don't know what to expect tomorrow and they they don't have an excuse anymore. Okay, so I... I, And nothing stopping them. I made you repeat it because I love that, right? I I think you ought to do a reflection on that and I think you ought to write a book on it, right? Because those two (laughs) things are super important. But I love if you put that into practice and you say, you know, like, listen, pastor, 
put aside your pride and admit that you need Jesus. Get up on Sunday mornings and make it about Jesus. And if it's going to be about Jesus, then it has to start with, I need Jesus, right? So most of us get up and we talk about Jesus, but it doesn't start with, I need Jesus. Mm -hmm. It starts with, you need Jesus. Right? You and I can sit here and we can look out at our crowd of people out there. We can pick out Robbie and we can say, Robbie, we both know you're messed up and you need Jesus. Right? We can do that and we're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to offer you Jesus today, Robbie. We're going we're gonna to help you out. Right? But the truth of the matter is, we need to start by saying, we're messed up, Robbie. And, and we need Jesus first. Right? And guess what? When we get Jesus and when we get the right Jesus and when, when Jesus works in us, then we're going to be Jesus to you, Robbie. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do Jesus for you. We're going to be Jesus for you. And then, then you're actually going to get some help. But most of us stand up yeah. on Sunday mornings instead of saying, I need Jesus, we say, you need Jesus. Yeah. And it's frustrating in nature, right? I don't think that there's a person here that didn't recognize that this demonically 2,000 demon-possessed man, right, might be Guinness Book of World Records for demon possession. That this man needed Jesus. I don't think there's a person in the world that would have a hard time with that. Mm. The problem is everybody in the community, everybody in right. the village they all need you. needed Jesus too. Yeah, rank our demons and rank our sin. Right. I'm glad this is only Demon Tuesday ranking. because if this was Saturday and we were doing this and uh, tomorrow was Sunday, man, I'd be under a lot of conviction. But between now and then, I can get rid of all that oh, conviction. I'll make sure to remind you. Right yeah. Church. I, 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 think it, I think this has been eye-opening. So once again, Good. this is two, two Friday nights in a row that you have really, uh, really challenged us to think about, like, listen, man... If you really want Jesus, it's going to start. If you really want your community to have Jesus, if you really want your state, if you want your political leaders to have Jesus, you can pray for our president all you want. Yeah, be Jesus. But it's got to start with you, right? Yep. And what we got to do is quit begging Jesus to go away and quit begging for only part of the Holy Spirit and quit begging for only part of Jesus, right? Yeah. So are you going to finish this up or what? Are you want me to read it? Yeah, oh go. Oh my gosh, where was I? Uh, you were on 17. You're going to start uh, on 18. How be it, Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish, publish, yes, yeah. in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him and all the men did marvel. Right, so... I love this part of the story because we just, you know, we, we, we see the, the response that you should have, right? So in verse 17, it says, and they began to beg Jesus to depart from mm -hmm. the region. That's the people, right? Right. Right. The people who didn't get anything from Jesus. Then verse 18 is so fantastic, right? Because it says, as he was getting into the boat, so Jesus does exactly what they want. Man, <laughs> Jesus is a gentleman, right? If we beg him to leave our churches, if we beg him to leave our homes, he if will. we beg him to leave our conversations, if we beg him to leave You don't have to beg. Friends, he's going to go, right? You just have to ignore him. He'll leave. But as he's getting uh, in the boat, as he's leaving, mm -hmm. it says, <clears throat> the man who had been possessed with the demons begged. That he can go with him. That he could go with him, right? You see that where the guy who got touched by Jesus wanted to be where? Where Jesus was. Well, yeah, because I'd be like, there's more demons coming. I don't want to be with the demons. I, I want to be, be with you. I want to be with the guy who changed my life, right? Yeah. So, again, part of the, the way that we know people who are really... How would you not fall in love with him in that moment? Exactly. Exactly. And people who people who have been with Jesus want to be with Jesus. They just want to keep being with Jesus. They want to keep being with Jesus. They want to keep being with Jesus. It's just all about Jesus, right? The, the only way you could send Jesus away, I was not about Jesus. If you haven't been touched by Jesus. Because the second Jesus touches you, then guess what? You should want that, right? Now, we know there's all kinds of examples of the people who got healed and didn't follow Jesus and all that kind of stuff. But this, this is the response that should... This, this guy, his life was completely changed by Jesus. And what did he do? He wanted to be where Jesus was, right? And it's funny because if this was me, I'd be like, yes, Robbie, you can come with me the rest of my life, 
right? You follow me around, Robbie, and you can be with me and wherever I am, my people will be your people and your people will be my people. We love the Ruth story. It's fantastic, right? But what does Jesus say to this guy? No. No, you can't come. Is there any part of that that makes sense to anybody? Why would no, Jesus... No, I'm like, that's so mean. That's but right. No, Why? but I get it. But, but he's sending them. Where is he sending this guy? Well, he's telling him because he don't... Okay, so he clearly knows his heart at this point. Yeah. And how, like, desperately, like, in love this guy is, clearly. How great to have him running around all the places Jesus isn't telling everybody. Well, that's great, but where is he sending this guy back to? These guys who beg Jesus More to go. I know. He's sending them back the to the God, bad people. Yeah, that's the world. God doesn't save us and then stick us in a bubble, Andy. I know that's what church taught you. No, listen, but Jesus. But that's not what happened. Jesus gets in the boat and he goes away. Sailing. Yeah. Take me away. Yeah, I know. He went to heaven, right. too, and left so us all here. Jesus goes away <laughs> and says, oh, hey, you. You go deal with the guys who didn't want me. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, Jesus hey, would never way, do that. By the way, you're not going to, like, try to eat your arm anymore and, like, cut your leg off. So, now, congratulations. Now you, you go be a testimony. You go do something. You go tell people about me, right? Mm -hmm. What an incredible thing. Like, again, we want God to come in and pick us up out of, like, the claw game. You know, pick us up out of the machine and save us from, you know... He did that with Philip. He did. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what he. That's what we want God to do. Right? Get us out of the mess. What, like, and, and by the way, all oh, this. This is such a. You did such a good job tonight. I didn't do right? anything. God, we we want we we preach this. We preach. Get out of alcoholism. Get out of drugs. Get out of sex trafficking. Get out of lying. Get up and get way away from him. Get like you gotta you gotta never go back to the bar. You gotta never go back. This, this this Jesus takes this guy, heals him, and sends him back to the community that put him there. He said, "Go home." Right. <laughs> go 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 home. Go, go back to the people who put you there. Now again, I'm not advocating that you go spend time in the bars. I'm not advocating because that's not what Jesus was doing here. What Jesus no. was saying is, go spend time with the people. Right. Right? So those people that you were drinking with, those people that you were doing drugs with, those people that you've been lying and gossiping with, go those people them. that you were sleeping with, those people that you would... Go back to those people. Go back to those people and tell them, hey, I goofed up. Right? Now, now oh, like, this is fantastic, right? Because I recently, like, I've watched somebody do this, right? Like, I watched somebody do this and I've worked through the process with them of, like, like, hey, I need to, I need to go back to some of these people and tell them some stuff, right? And, and like every part of me wanted to be like, no, 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 no. You need to stay away from those people. You need to not, you know, again, in full disclosure, I benefit from that, right? And like, no, don't go do that. But, but you're watching, like, that, that is exactly what God tells us to do. Mm -hmm. Go home. Show them how go to back to the people and show them how it's done. Listen, I'm just going to brag on you for a second. Right, like publicly. Usually, I talk about you incognito. But now I'm going to talk to you publicly. Like I watched you do this with your own family a few weeks ago, right? Where you went back to your family, and 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 were a rock. Like God planted you there for a while, and and you're leading and helping your family, right? A, a family that listen, you know, like you you've had ups and downs with, right? A family that just like my family or any family, like a family that you've had great moments with and you've had hard moments with. But God does that, right? And go home, Summer. Go home and, and take care of some people, right? Again, Paul says, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. It's better for me to go to heaven. But it's better for you if I stay on this god-awful planet, right? <laughs> and and so, so he says, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay because it's better for you. There are lots of moments where it is better for us to go but it's better for the other people if we stay right i think that super this this whole thing is important because not only did that guy go to his home but he went to 10 cities the Decapolis is 10 cities i told them all about what happened to him told them all about jesus and we have no idea because it doesn't tell us that he got 421 converts right we're not taking tabs he didn't hand out cards do you want to accept jesus right and say yes or no we don't know what happened here but what we do know is that Jesus left him right where he was to minister to the people that he had been with. Sometimes that's what God does. Yeah. Right? So good.
Good. Wrap it up and I'll be quiet because all I've done is preach for 25 minutes. Go. Wrap it up. You did not. I talked a lot. I don't know. I feel like I, I did know. a lot of preaching. No, you did. That's that's the point. It's good. You got me on a roll. I'm ready to go. Now I want to make some videos. Uh, Good. So, uh, Friday nighters, um, don't be comfortable in your misery. Uh, don't be the people that pray for Jesus to leave. Uh, don't... Don't be jealous of the people that get their healing. Um, don't be jealous of the people that get deliverance. Just run to God and say, I want it too. And don't expect it to look the same because it's not going to look the same. It's different for everybody. Yep. And sometimes it's harder or easier for you. So don't give up. Run to Jesus and uh, just beg him to save you from all the things. And he will. So... Mm. We love you guys. Have a great Friday night with Jesus and whoever you're with. We will see you next week.